I've got a bumper vlog for you today. There is a little bit of a fabric haul, things I purchased at the Knitting and Stitching show, as well as my plans for autumn and winter this year. So hi and welcome to my vlog. I'm Amelia and this is So Amelia, my channel where I share all about making a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. This week I'm going to share a few of the fabrics I bought at the Knitting and Stitching show, as well as the plans I have for my sewing this autumn and winter. Now, I'm someone who does get excited about planning for the season ahead. I wasn't excited about autumn and winter and then the cold weather struck and now I've been seeing inspiration everywhere. So these are currently the patterns and fabrics that are inspiring me for this autumn and winter, but I may not get all of these things sewn up and that's fine. Instead of doing monthly plans for the next few months, I'm just going to do this roundup of ideas that I have for this autumn and winter and we'll see which of these things gets made up. I may share another plans video later on in the winter, we'll just see. But for now, these are the patterns and fabrics that are inspiring me, as well as the garments that I just need to add to my handmade wardrobe to fill gaps that I have seen as I've been transferring my summer clothes out and my autumn and winter clothes in. <laughs> So what I'll start with is a little roundup of those things that I bought at the Knitting and Stitching show because I did go with a little bit of a plan. I knew that there were some fabrics that I wanted for clothes that I needed to add to my wardrobe and I did manage to find a few of those which was really exciting. So the first stall that we actually visited was the lovely Tilly and the Buttons. We met Abby and Tilly at the stand and they were just so so lovely. It was lovely to meet them and there was a pattern that I have been looking at for quite a while that I decided to buy and that was the pearl cardigan. Now this is a lovely wrap cardigan. It's got plain sleeves or it has got balloon sleeves. It comes as a short sleeve or as a long sleeve. Now I thought about buying this when it came out originally which I think was last winter but I didn't purchase it at the time because I didn't have fabric to use for this pattern but You'll have to stay tuned for next week's video when I'm going to share my plans for the Sew Up Cycle 22 challenge because this pattern is going to be part of that challenge. So I knew that I had fabrics I wanted to use to make the pearl so I did then head for Tilly's stand and purchase the pattern. I'm really excited to get this one made up. I do think that a wrap cardigan is so so useful in the autumn and the winter as an extra layer over my dresses and things like that so Really excited to get this one made up soon. So the next time we visited was Roy's Fabrics and they had some beautiful cottons and cotton poplins by Rose and Hubble. I love Rose and Hubble cottons, but it is sometimes hard online to see how big or how little the Ditsy print is. And it's just nice to see the colors and the fabrics in person. It's always nice, isn't it? So I did buy a couple of cotton poplins from there. I bought these two little Ditsy florals this one I want to use for a geranium dress as a gift for friends who've just had a baby. And then this one I'm going to put away in my stash, probably for my daughter next winter. She doesn't need too many clothes this winter, but when I saw this print I just thought it was so, so beautiful. And I will definitely get that made up for her at some point. So that's going to go away in my stash for now, but I did know that I loved that print and I will definitely use that. I might even turn that into a little smocked Mary D by Children's Corner Patterns at some point. So I do have plans for that fabric, but I did just buy it because it's pretty. So the next cotton poplin that I bought, I do have a definite plan for, and I, ha I did go to the Knitting and Stitching show to look for a lighter weight cotton that I could use for this plan. And this is the cotton that I found. It is a Rosen Hubble cotton. It's in this lovely navy with a yellowy cream background and then little touches of lighter blue. So I really liked the navy base. I do think that suits my skin tone and I liked the size of the floral print on this one. I think it's really, really pretty. Now what I want to do with this is to make another Tilly the Buttons Marnie dress. So that is what I'm wearing today. If you watched my video from a couple of weeks back, I shared my experience of making the Marnie dress. This is a version that I made as the mini dress with the neck ruffle and the sleeve ruffles, but I did not do the tucks in the front, which I just think is so beautiful. But this is a very light viscose. Now I bought this from Planet Make It and they're closing down sale sadly, so I can't link to this fabric, but it is just a lovely light viscose fabric and it's perfect I think for the Marnie because it just allows the pattern to shine but it also isn't so voluminous over my hips and waist. I did make a waist tie for this dress which I can wear if I choose to but I do quite like the billowy feel of this dress and it's just a really nice autumnal one to wear. 
The main reason I want to make the Marnie again is because I want to make a smocked version for me. Now, before you think I've gone mad, I have seen quite a few smocked blouses and smocked dresses for women on the high street this year. I'll pop in an inspiration picture here. If I can smock this bodice panel here and then perhaps put the smocking on the top of the sleeves here where the pleats would go, that that might look like just a nice little additional feature. I'm not sure that I would add the sleeve ruffles if I smock this dress, but I may add the neck ruffle. Lots of thinking to be done about how I'm going to turn this into the Marnie because I've got lots of different ideas that I want to play around with for that pattern, but I do want to try and make myself a dress with a smocked bodice and I think the Marnie would be really cute. I just have to decide if I'm going to smock the bodice completely or if I'm just going to add a panel of smocking to the top of this centre piece that hangs from the bodice. So if you've got any ideas or any suggestions of what you think would look good, then do drop me a comment below. But that is one of my autumn and winter plans is to sew up the Marnie in this beautiful Rose and Hubble cotton poplin that I bought at the Knitting and Stitching Show. Now, the other thing I was looking for at the show was a corduroy fabric because I would love to make myself a knee length corduroy skirt for the winter. I just find I get so much wear out of that sort of length of skirt and I wanted it specifically in a dark blue color. I have worn and worn and worn a ready to wear skirt like that in my wardrobe until it is no longer wearable. So I want to replace it with a similar style of skirt. So at the Liberty stand, I saw that they had these beautiful corduroy fabrics and they had them in different lengths. Now I absolutely fell in love with this colorway. It's got just a very subtle pattern on that corduroy and it is a baby corduroy, so it's nice and fine to wear and quite light. So I will need to line that, otherwise it's gonna stick to my tights. But I just, again, I love that color. It's not gonna go next to my face, obviously, because I didn't buy enough to make a pinafore, but I want to make a simple skirt from this. Now, because it's only a meter, I'm going to have to think quite carefully about which skirt I'm going to make. But the plan is to make the Tilly and the Buttons Delphine skirt. Now, in the Tilly and the Buttons Love at First Stitch book, she has a couple of skirts, and in fact, the one on the cover is the Delphine skirt, which is the one that I'm thinking I would like to make. Now, unfortunately, this is not a size inclusive book because it only comes in the Tilly sizes one to eight. However, the Marnie that I showed previously and the Pearl Cardigan both come in her new extended size range, which is great. But unfortunately, this one is still in those sizes one to eight, which is up to a waist measurement of 38 inches and hips of 47 inches. So not a huge size range there. So I fit in between a size four and a five, size four at the waist and a size five at the hip. So I think I will grade this out because I'd like the waist to be fitted, but I do want to make sure I've got enough ease over my hips, especially because I'll be hopping on and off the bicycle wearing this skirt. So I want to make sure there's enough room for my hips. But according to the fabric requirements in the book, I should be able to get that skirt out of a meter of fabric. And like I say, I've got some navy blue lining fabric in my stash so hopefully there's enough left from the other project that I used that for to squeeze out the lining but if I need to use some black lining fabric for the back that's okay. I'd rather use up what's in my stash than buy new and you're not going to see the lining anyway. But the outside of the skirt will be made in this beautiful Liberty corduroy and I'm very excited about making that. So what else did I buy at the show? So we did go and visit the lovely Victoria, who is Little Rosy Cheeks. I absolutely adore her labels. I put one in almost every children's garment that I make for my three children because I love the positive messages that she puts on her labels. I absolutely love the quality of her labels, particularly with children's clothes, especially my children. Their clothes are in the wash a lot. And I have to say that those labels stand up to repeated washing and wearing. They still look like they did the day I put them into their clothes. So for all those reasons, I love to buy Victoria's labels. And when I see them in person, I'm just too tempted to not buy any. So at the show, I went and had a lovely chat with Victoria and I bought just two packets. I bought the Made for Greatness labels and I bought her Made in Me Time labels. So one packet for me and one packet for my children. I really like these ones, the Made for Greatness. They're just a little bit more subtle, and as my big boy gets bigger, he's having a bit more of a say in the labels that he wants in his clothing, which is fantastic. And I think he'll really like the slightly more subtle nature of these. They've still got that lovely positive messaging that I love about little rosy cheeks, but slightly more subtle for him as he gets older. So that's great. So those two packets of labels I bought at the Knitting and Stitching Show, ready to pop into some of these lovely autumn and winter makes. 
So the last thing I bought from the Knitting and Stitching show, I was quite restrained, really. Um, those Rose and Hubble cottons also, I should say, was £6 a metre, which was such a great deal, which is why I thought I would take advantage of being at the show, seeing the patterns and prints that I liked, and purchase them there. So the last fabric that I bought was from the Lady McElroy stand. Now they had a delicious assortment of remnants that they were selling for £12 a metre, so Whenever I see the word remnants, it's like moth to a flame, I cannot resist. And there were so many fabrics I could have bought, but there are also so many hours in the day, I cannot sew all the things, especially with my children about to be on half term. So I was, I think, quite restrained, and I actually only bought one piece of fabric, but, oh my goodness, it's a fantastic piece of fabric. Now, if you followed me for a while, you'll know that the Paper Cut Patterns Nova Coat was on my Make 9 this year. Now, I did make a toile of that, a very wearable toile, I might add. I wear it all the time. I did make a wearable toile of that earlier in the year, but my idea was always that I would make a more wintry version of that coat for the winter. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if I'll get this made up in the next couple of months. This may be one that bumps over into 2023 in those really cooler months of January and February, just because... Life is busy, especially with three children, and I don't know that I'll get this made up in the next couple of months, but I wanted to share it with you anyway, especially because I bought it at the Knitting and Stitching show. And here it is. Now, I don't usually go for black, but when I saw this coating fabric, it is a wool and angora blend, and it is a dead stock fabric, apparently from Max Mara, that they were able to get in, and it was in the remnants pile for over half of what they originally were selling it for so it would have been rude really to leave it behind so i managed to get this remnant which was about 2.5 meters of this delicious wool fabric and so i am going to use that to make a second nova coat for the winter now what i would like to do with that is potentially to make a quilted lining to go inside it just to give it that extra warmth now it is a lovely thick wool so i think that it will be quite warm but for added warmth in those really wintry months i'd like to add a quilted lining from a lot of my different scraps that i've been collecting now i have put aside in a part of my sewing room some scraps of fabrics that i've used that have red in them because my idea was to make a red Nova coat. However, I think the red fabrics will go really well with this black herringbone wool on the inside and be a really nice pop of colour, which I think I'd really like, especially if the outside is in this sort of black and white herringbone. So that's the idea for that. Like I say, that might take a little while to sew up, especially if I'm making a quilted lining, but I'm very, very excited about this fabric. It's definitely going to get made up into a Nova coat. I did wonder about some other coat patterns that I also love, like the Bella Loves Patterns Traveller Coat. Oh my goodness, that is stunning. And it's on my list of things I would love to make one day. But it does require quite a few meters of fabric, and I don't quite have enough of this. So this will become a full-length Nova coat, I think, for the winter. So that was it. That was all that I bought at the Knitting and Stitching show. There was one more fabric, though, that I did bring home with me. The lovely Gemma Daly, who is the Daily Thread on Instagram, was doing a de-stash. And I purchased one of her de-stash fabrics. And then as we were chatting about it on Instagram, she said she was coming to the Knitting and Stitching show on the same day that I went. So we did manage to catch up at the Knitting and Stitching show, which was so nice. And she gave me the piece of fabric that I had bought from her de-stash. Now, this is the fabric here. Isn't it gorgeous? It's a Mind the Maker viscose twill, I think. And I have seen this around for a while and I've never bought it. But when I saw it on Gemma's de-stash, I just had to buy it. And what I want to make with this is the by Gracie Steele Flirt Skirt. Now, I've mentioned that before. I don't love the name of the skirt, but I just love the design of the skirt. I love the shaped waistband. It's quite a deep waistband, and I really love the full skirt. Now, I want to make this a just above the knee version in this fabric for the winter to wear with tights and boots and black jumper. I just think that that will look really, really cool. Now, Gemma is so sweet. She actually included three labels in there as well. So thank you, Gemma. That was really, really kind of you. It was so lovely to meet Gemma and to have a little chat. We also met Michelle, who is sewing bunny, and that was really lovely to meet her as well, and their friend Katie, who was with them too. It was just so nice to see lots of other sewists and to meet people and chat with them in person. So. Thank you, Gemma, for bringing that to the Knitting and Stitching show. That is going to be part of my autumn and winter sewing plans now, and it will become the Gracie Steele float skirt.
Now the last couple of plans I want to share for autumn and winter are plans for jumpers. It's always something that I need in my wardrobe in the winter are jumpers and warm layers. And Minerva very kindly gifted me this sweat in it in exchange for a post on their website. It's a lovely, just a very soft lilac sweat in it and it's just so, so nice. Now it's not wool or anything but it will be a nice extra layer to put over my dresses. And the reason I wanted this colour is because I got these beautiful buttons in a So Haley Jane box. Now they are Pigeon Wishes and Cut One Pair Purple Heart Buttons. Aren't they just so gorgeous? And I haven't had a project that I could use these on yet. But when I saw this one on the Minerva website, I thought it would go perfectly with these buttons. And my plan for that is the True Bias Marlowe Cardigan. So that's another great inclusive pattern. It goes right up to a 46 inch bust. And I think it's printed in the 0 to 14 and then 12 to 30, something like that. So that's the True Bias Marlowe cardigan. It is a very oversized cardigan, so even if your bust is over that 46 inch measurement, you could probably make this one, bearing in mind that I come out as about a size 8 and I sized down to a size 0. I'm definitely not a size 0, but I prefer a slightly more fitted look for my cropped jumpers. And as you'll see, I think the fit is absolutely fine. It still has that slight oversized look without drowning me in fabric. So do check those finished measurements before you make it in case you want to size down a little as well. So my idea for this is to make that cropped Marlowe cardigan with these Pigeon Wishes buttons. However, I did see that No Me Patterns, which is a new pattern company, they have released a few new patterns this winter, and one of which is by the lovely Alyssa Threads, and it's a gorgeous cardigan and skirt set. Now I don't want to make the set, but I do love the look of that cropped cardigan with the ruffle. I just think that's so pretty. And again, it's got buttons down the front, so I could use these beautiful buttons. Now I'm keeping an eye out. I haven't started making this one yet, because there was talk that those patterns might be released as PDF patterns so that we can buy them over here in the UK. Currently they're only available in the US. So I'm just holding off on this one for a month or so and waiting to see if those patterns are released on PDF and then I can turn this into the Alyssa Threads cardigan for No Me patterns. Either way, I think this will make a really nice cardigan for the winter months and I'm looking forward to getting that one sewn up as soon as I can make a decision about which of those two patterns I'm going to sew up. Okay, thank you so much for sticking around if you've made it this far. Lots of fabric, lots of plans, but like I said, I've been really inspired with a lot of patterns this autumn and winter, and I just wanted to share them with you in one video, and then I can just potter away at these when the inspiration strikes. So, here is one of my other plans, and that is to make the Mile End Sweatshirt by Closet Core Patterns. I did buy this at the end of last winter, but I didn't have time to sew it up before the weather changed. Hooray! It was so lovely and warm. So this got put away to make up for this winter. Now I want to make view B, I think, which is the sweatshirt with the ruching across the bottom. I think there's like a tie that you add to ruch up that front if you want to, because as far as, far as I can see it is quite a boxy oversized fit, and I think that would be nice to draw in over the waist a little bit, but we'll see. I may yet make view A, which is just the simple boxy sweater. The reason I love the Mile End jumper is because it is a very nice one for color blocking, and I have these two fabrics, which you might recognize from last winter. They are both by the same fabric company, and so they're both exactly the same weight, so I know that they would work well together in a color blocked sweater. Now I'll link them below, because I can't remember where I got them from right now, but if I can find them again, I shall link them below. They're beautiful soft fleece sweatshirtings, and they're so lovely and snugly and warm. The two jumpers I made from them were the Hug Hoodie, from both of these. They have worn well and washed well, and I love wearing them. So that's what I think I want to make with these, is a color blocked mile end sweater, because I do think these two fabrics go really beautifully together. And that would just mean, I've got a good sized remnant of each, not enough to make a sweater out of each fabric, but perhaps enough to color block that mile end sweatshirt, because I don't want these to just sit languishing in my stash. They're far too nice for that. So I would like to turn them into a garment that I can wear in the winter. The last fabric I'm going to share with you is one that I bought for my daughter. Now I bought this quite a while ago so I'm not sure if it's available anymore. So Sarah Jane designs fabrics for Michael Miller and I know that they sell out really quickly and I know that the designs are not always repeated so when I did see this one I think my daughter must have just been a very small baby and I was scrolling late at night, probably one of her night feeds, and I saw this and I jumped on it. 
I haven't got a lot of it, but I'm hoping I have enough of this beautiful nutcracker print cotton. I mean, look at it. Isn't that stunning? It's a border print cotton, so you've got a good chunk of fabric above here that I could use for the bodice, I hope, and then this border print down the bottom. I mean, oh, I absolutely love it. So you'll know from my recent video that I made a vintage McCall's pattern for my daughter, a dress that my grandmother had originally made for my mother, so it's a very special pattern to me. But what I do love about that pattern is it allows for a border print to be almost unbroken around the bottom of the dress whilst there is really lovely shaping in the bodice. And I think that I have just about got enough of this fabric to make that border print dress. Now if I don't have enough, I'm going to go to my local fabric shop and see if I can find a plain blue cotton that matches the blue of this part of the fabric and then I can make the bodice from that. But I'm hoping with some clever cutting I might be able to get that one out. So we'll just have to see. If I can't get the McCall's pattern out of this I might try using either the Mary D, the Children's Corner Mary D pattern or the geranium dress, the Made by Ray geranium dress, perhaps with a little capped sleeve. I just want to make something that's very simple and allows that border print to shine. But I think that would make a really sweet Christmas dress for my daughter and I'm really excited to get that made up for her. So there's my fabric haul and my plans for the autumn and the winter. I'm sure there'll be a few more makes that creep in there as well. But those are the main things that I would like to get sewn up. So I hope you enjoyed seeing those fabrics that I bought at the Knitting and Stitching show. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of those things that I would like to get made up for the autumn and the winter. Do share in the comments below anything that you're planning to make for the autumn and the winter, or if you have any suggestions and tips on those fabrics and patterns that I shared today, do also pop them in the comments below. It's always so lovely to chat with you there. And thank you for all of the lovely comments that you do leave under my videos on a weekly basis. It is so nice to hear from you and to chat with you in the comments. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you as a regular viewer. So do click the like button below the video, hit subscribe and hit that notification bell as well so that you'll be notified when I publish future vlogs. But I'm going to leave it there for today. I think that's quite enough from me for one week. I hope you've enjoyed all those fabrics and patterns and that you have a lovely week ahead filled with lots of happy sewing. And I shall see you in next week's very exciting Sew Up Cycle videos. I do hope you'll come back for that one. Happy sewing, everybody. I'll see you next week. Bye.